Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Steve coming back with another video here. Um, so you can fall off of here. And this one I'm going to show you one of the very first games I ever created on a Commodore 64. So this is um, pretty, it's written in basic. Um, let me just take a look at my listing here. I'm going to switch over to the monitor here so you can see it. I know it's not the best resolution. Um, I've got the monitor as close as I can there. Um, Think about getting a zoom camera or something, which would probably be better for this. This listing was written, I don't know if I have it dated here. Actually, this was in 1995. So, I'll show you the listing here. And these are kind of the examples I wanted to show you. This is just some of the earliest examples I ever wrote. Um, you can probably see some of my bad writing style here. Use a lot of if thens. I have some spaghetti code going on here. But it was my earliest journey into the you know Commodore 64. And then there's a game over screen. So let's run it. And I just realized I need my joystick. I'm going to use my trusty joystick here. And the reason I didn't want to run. Oh, I know what it is. I have this other program running in the background. Let's reload this. I changed the color settings on my computer too so that you guys can see it better. While it's loading again, I'm just going to look in the joystick and get to work here. Okay, make sure it loads. There it goes. Um, you're probably not going to see it very good. I'll try to put the, um, yeah, it looks like it's a little bit better if I do that. It's like almost like, um, looks like kind of a Pong thing. And of course, I got it from the ideal Pong. And I just moved this little ball up and down here. No, wrong joystick point. Should have made it work with both, but I didn't. So you'll see that little ball moving up. There it goes. Maybe it's this key I use. Which one am I using? I think maybe it's the red one I'm moving. Hold on. Still trying to figure this out. It's been so long. I thought it was this one. Or this joystick is not working. It's on the other side. Actually, it's this little red thing on the, the opposite side. Here I kept thinking it was the ball. So I got to hit that ball. The tough part about this is you got to line it up because it's flashing so much. It was really hard, and you only got so many seconds, and it disappears before it resets the whole screen. So if I, it's really hard to hit it. I missed it again. But you can see the kind of generic stuff I was working with in those days, and it just reset again. So it's got like a timer it resets after a while, and I just missed it again. So if I never hit it. And at this angle, I'll probably never see it. Because I can't really see from this angle. It's also spraying the line across the screen. to see where it's kind of breaking the wall there. I think you can just keep shooting it and I'll get it. Let's see. I got something because my score is 200 now. Oh, I just hit it 300. So, let's so I fix the color any better. But yeah, that's my little, my very first game I wanted to show you that I ever wrote on the Commodore 64. Let me break out of it here. And this thing's going to be hard to see again because it's in like a weird color. You see it a little bit there. I said, if I get a zoom camera, it'll probably be so much better. And that was kind of a funny angle, too, for the, the monitor and everything. And the camera grabs on here if I kind of just angle it a little bit, but it's just, it's not directly down at the computer. That's probably a little bit better like that. I had to kind of twist it a little bit. That's one of the first games I ever wrote. And. Back to the listing here. 
Whoops. Make sure that I just did there. I just freeze it. I just froze it again. Either that or my computer is docked. Let's try it again. So let's see what else is on here. This is a game that I found on a disc, and it's in one of these books. I think it might be in this one right here. The Common 64 Colors Graphics of Beginners. I think that's where I found it originally. So let's take a look here. It's got Shoot the Rapids. It's got some sound in it too. So we have to turn up the sound. You probably didn't hear the other one very well. It's also late at night here, so I don't want to kind of wake people up and everything, but let's look at the listing. And I got an error or something there. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Oh, I keep saying graphics too. Very hard to see at this angle. For some reason, when my joystick is pressing down, that's why it's creating characters as I'm trying to type. Let's try it again. Is it two? Maybe it was two. I'd have to shoot the rapids. Yeah, there it goes. Let's take a look at the listing. I wrote my highest score. So I, I typed this one in on November 7, 2000. I don't know if you can see it there at the top. And I never wrote down the book I got it from, so I was guessing it was probably one of those graphics books. But here's the listing. You probably won't be able to see it really good, but I think you can see a little bit better than you did before. It's actually not a bad game either. So you're about to shoot the rapids in your kayak. Control your paddles with your joystick or the it's got the greater and less than or the less than and greater keys. Basically it's those little less than greater keys on your keyboard there and in those days those were common you could just use them to move back and forth keys were common before they even really invented joysticks and um, this one is um, set up to the joystick though I'm pretty sure I changed it to the joystick because I went back and I modified a lot of these to work with different things or it might it might be you can kind of hear the ocean let's see yeah I set it up for the joystick there so as you move it along, you're basically trying to get through this little tunnel. I can probably put some of the color back on. I'm going to die trying to do this. I'm going to do this one-handed. That was actually on right now. It gets really hard after a while. It's actually a green background, but you really can't see it. This one gets really hard once it gets really, really narrow. You can see my score at the top there. I was so interested one time in converting this into a character set, but I never did. You know, create like a little background there. It's more like trees instead of little asterisks. But see, back in the days, the Commodore 64, I think the original pets, if I'm not mistaken, didn't really have a good character set. So the, it was common to use the, the pet accuracy characters for a lot of the graphics in those days. Of course, they still had sprites, but I mean, if you wanted to like redefine stuff, I'm not sure it really had a lot of options on that. Because it was very common on a lot of computers. Ooh, this is getting hard to really see normal graphics. Of course in these days those graphics were still fascinating since they were the first thing ever seen on the computer screen next to the Atari 2600 and some of the original game systems that were out at the time. This was before Nintendo 64 guys. Commodore 64 came right before Nintendo. 
I'm gonna die now. Yeah. I'm gonna die on purpose. There it goes. And it just ends. We're not gonna start it again, of course. I'm gonna do a reset. And now we're gonna see what else is on here. Kind of did all that all around a little bit here. I don't know if there's anything else to really show you. There's a lot of stuff on here. It would take forever to go through a lot of this stuff. Um, trying to see. I know this. there's an assembly language game. I guess I could show you that one. That one's kind of cool. But there's really no listing for that one. It's just um, loads directly from assembly language. Um, where's it at now? Just saw it. Oh, bomb.ml. And you just say comma 8, comma 1, and it'll load it directly that way. Without a fast cartridge, I won't be able to see the, the address though. But hopefully it defaults it into a listing where I can see it. And it did. 2070 there. So here's um fix the screen here a little bit more. Just have a little blue background there. I think if I do it like that, we can get a little bit more of the blue background. But it kind of loses some of it. And it kind of flashes, you know. It's really hard for me to see it at this point, but that's right. I know it's number one. Of course, I'm probably in the wrong. Let me see. I pressed one. Oh, there it goes. So it's kind of like a maze thing. And you move this little guy around here at the top. Let's see if I can do it without looking at the screen. And there's like little things you pick up. I think those are the keys. It's scroller, too. So it's really hard to. Um, to see the whole map on the screen at once. This thing used to drive me crazy. Just get like so many dead ends on this. I think this is the right way, maybe. There's a timer, you hear that tick tick counting down like that? It's counting down. Written in complete machine language, of course, for speed. going to die. I think I made it. Ah, look at that, I made it actually. I got lucky. I usually don't make it the first time that I did. Um, oh, I forgot the keys. Oh, you have to go back and you collect all the keys because you can't get out of the maze until you collect all the keys. I totally forgot about that. Now I have to look at it just to see where the keys are. I'm not going to make it. I wasted too much time. You see, it's not easy to figure or find your way around it. Even though I found the exit, I didn't have all the keys, so you can't exit. That's why I didn't like this one too much, because it's really tough to really get all the keys and get out in time. It's a good idea. I mean, it was, it was originally submitted in um, Compute Magazine. For those who don't know, Compute was a, a famous magazine that day that it housed not only the Commodore 64, but Atari, um, Tandy, and some IBM stuff. And Apple also. Apple 2C. Well, I'm just wondering like crazy now. I don't even know where I'm going. It's just going to blow up when I don't make it. Let's see how much time I got left. I only have 43 seconds left. I'm not going to make it. I'm just repeating myself. Yeah, I was just here earlier. Ah, oh boy. Let's see. Where did I miss myself here? 19 seconds. There's no way I'm going to make it. Did I go that way? I think I should have went this way last time. See if I can get one before I die. Yeah, I got one. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I got one there. Oh, almost. That's what it does when you die. And a little fun little thing there. And let's go back. I 
actually coming out a lot better finally. Let's see here. Hero and the enemy, I'm trying to think what these are. I'm going to run this one even though some people may not be interested in this. These were the original popularity, these, these are kind of programs, text adventures were very popular on the original Commodore 64, Atari, Apple, Candy, you know, all those computers that were the old bit computers and even probably some of the UK computers of course. But this one's kind of a long one too. I take a second to load it. This is a really fun one. I like this one a lot. You can really get stuck trying to get out of this time capsule. Run it. Actually, let me just list it again. Just to show you how long it is. Kind of see some of the code here. Straighten it out again. As much as I can. This is a pretty massive program. And no, I didn't write this one. This one I found on a... It's in a book somewhere. I probably own this book somewhere. In those days, I, it was common to go for me to go to the library. This was before the internet, guys. And I used to get a lot of my programs from the library just by, you know, checking out the books for Commodore 64 and typing them in my computer and saving them. Which is unheard of these days. You would... I think it would be far and few to find a Commodore 64 book in any library these days. Because the, the books you saw up on my desktop here, or on my, um, over here, these books, these Commodore 64 books, I really had to get a, let's just say I had to arm wrestle somebody to get those on eBay. Okay, so let's run this. How about the sound effects? Camera a bit. I guess I'm not going to get it much straighter than that. There we go. And saying instructions, you can just say yes if you want, and it kind of, you're probably not going to see it very well, but these are the instructions of what to do. And you press return. Answer some more instructions, and now I need to fix it again. You can kind of see those when it says you see window seat shoes can basically you're like imagine yourself walking into a room, and that's what you're going to be looking at. You're seeing a window, you're seeing a seat there, you're seeing shoes in front of you, and you're seeing a can. And you can use actions like get can, I think, will work. You drank it, whatever it was, tasted horrible. <laughs> So I'm probably going to get sick now. Get shoes. And it lets you get the shoes. And they disappear. Um, let's look at the seat. I don't think you can get a seat. It's not compute. Uh, are we sitting down? Sit down. Don't be scared. Fear breeds fear. Isn't that funny? So let's see. We can't look at it. Um, look at the can. Maybe it doesn't like to look for me. Maybe examine the can. You can't even use look in this one. Take seat. Take seat. Ah, he doesn't understand it. Try get. Sounds better. Get seat. Of course you can't get it. It's just a seat. Let's see if we can move around. Can't move around. This one was a lot harder because I couldn't remember how to get out of here. Because you can't move anywhere. You can't go west, east, north, south. You're looking at a window. There's a window there. Let's sit there with a window. It doesn't like the look command. Let me see if I recognize three letter commands. Oh. 
what would you do with a window? You can't take it. You can't get it. Enter window. Oops. Let's try that. Enter window. Yeah, I'm about done with this one. <laughs> but you can see that's what text adventures were all about. And I wrote my other ones to make this one's a lot harder. Didn't really want to spend a lot of time on this one. I think it just has a break reset protection scheme and won't let me back in. Or my computer has died. Yeah, I think it's died on me. One of the other disadvantages, I guess we'll call that a night. My computer gets hot after a while and it won't reload anything. So I have to kind of wait another, I don't know, until it cools down the chips or whatever. But that's it for this video. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, short video. And sorry we got taken away and everything. But again, as I was saying, like some of these books here, um, these have some of the listings and stuff like that. There's some graphics in there and stuff like that. And this is where I originally found these at the library, you know, and checked out a lot of the books in those days to kind of learn more about the Commodore 64. There's a graphics one here. And I've showed these before, of course, but I think, you know, the whole idea was just typing in these listings back in the days, you would find programs in here, and you could just go through these, and you could just start typing in all the listings and everything. So there's a sprite there, kind of shows you all the little sprite airplane works and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you that short video just to kind of um, prepare you for the process of where I'm going and everything here. And, of course, what I'm going to be doing is getting more Commodore 64 stuff out to you guys. Um, I'm going to check out some people have already suggested Lemon64, and I'm still getting more responses on that, so I appreciate that very much. And, yeah, uh, maybe eventually I'll be able to get everything connected to the Commodore 64 and get it communicating with the PC so we can download these a lot faster. That was like I, what I did back in the days before all that is I hand-wrote everything. And before I actually even owned a disk drive, I actually had a cassette recorder and I had to record everything cassette but even before the cassette when I bought my very first computer which of course was an Atari I didn't even have a cassette recorder because I could not afford one because I wasn't even working I was still in high school at that, those times before I even got a job and I actually used to just you know load things directly into my computer and basically would sit there and type programs in and turn it off and lose all of my code. So eventually what I started doing is I started writing down my listings and I used to have tons of those listings written down and well let's just say I parted with them probably too soon in life but that's another story. But anyways I was fortunate as somebody said to keep all of my Commodore 64 software so all of these are just loaded with like I said tons and tons you can see here there's um tons and tons of listings I have on here and on the fronts backs and everything and just they just go on and on and on you can see some here and I always write them down there and there's some on the back there so yeah I mean each one of these probably has a good 30 different you know listings basic programs on them and just fronts and backs and everything you know I was just totally obsessed with the computer in those days so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe to this channel uh, maybe I'll show you some of the games too, but I don't know. There's Outrun and one of my favorites, of course, Dragon's Lair. And who could ever forget who you're going to call Ghostbusters. Um, and then I had Double Dragon. I've showed that on my channel before. I have Batman. There's just a lot of different ones. I also have another disc here where I have loads and loads of other games from all the winter games, summer games, and just many, many games I had just went obsessed with the Commodore 64. So I have a lot of stuff here, so, but my Commodore 64 died, so I guess we'll have to bear with that until it, you know, it overheats after a good while. I usually notice about an hour is when it overheats, and there's probably a chip or something in there that's burning up too fast, and right now, I don't have the money to go out and buy a Commodore 64, so if I can get those um, transfer files or those SD, you know, disks or whatever working, and get those working on my computer or even my famous um, zip floppy here if I ever got that thing working then of course I can get this uploaded to the computer before it ends up dying on me and at least have some programs to work with for now but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, please like and subscribe this channel and look forward to more videos and as I said we're very soon I'll get the rest of that very basic going here so thanks for watching guys as always appreciate you very much 
And I'm just going to end this with saying, let's put the word great in the Commodore 64 back in the Commodore 64 again. Thanks for watching, everybody.